Hello and welcome to Neurology Live Peer Exchange Management of Cardiac Amyloidosis. I'm Dr. John Burke from Boston University School of Medicine. Joining me today in this virtual discussion are my colleagues, Dr. Akshay Desai, Director of uh, Cardiomyopathy and Heart Failure Program at Brigman Women's Hospital in Boston, Dr. Mazin Hanna, Co Director of the Amyloidosis Center at Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio, and Dr. Ron Wittelez co-director and actually founder of the Amyloid Center at Stanford University in Palo Alto, California. Today we're going to discuss a number of topics pertaining to the diagnosis and treatment of cardiac amyloidosis. Let's get started on our first topic. Which appropriately is, what's amyloid? Amyloid is a family of diseases resulting from the misassembly and misfolding of particular proteins. There are over 30 proteins that can misfold to form amyloid. Uh, identifying the uh, subunit protein is critical to the management of disease. It not only determines uh, what organs are involved, but ultimately defines what therapies um, are uh, considerations. To begin with here, um, Ron, um, can you give us uh, some insights into how you um, address uh, a referral uh, for cardiac amyloid with no uh, idea whether we're talking about AL or TTR amyloid? Sure, thank you. Uh, so when a referral comes in, most uh, it's with suspicion of cardiac amyloidosis, it tends to be for one of two reasons, either uh, somebody has had cardiac imaging and has the suspicion based on that uh, that's been raised as cardiac amyloidosis, or they have a known diagnosis of systemic amyloidosis and there's a question of cardiac involvement. If we're talking about the former and it's uh, really a question of do they have amyloidosis at all, uh, there can be some clues to imaging. I think we're going to get to that a little bit later, so I won't address them right now. Uh, but uh, often clues that uh, come off of echocardiography uh, more than anything uh, being increased wall thickness, what's often referred to as hypertrophy, although it's not actually hypertrophy of the muscles, but, uh, uh, but deposition of amyloid deposits. There can be some other clues, things like elevations in cardiac biomarkers, troponin, uh, BNP. Uh, and more than anything, if you're talking about systemic amyloidosis, it can be a constellation of abnormalities in other organs or organ systems. So neuropathy, for example, can certainly uh, occur with either of the two main types of cardiac amyloidosis, uh, AL or transthyretin, as we're going to get into. Uh, and, but uh, particularly with AL amyloidosis, uh, often other organ dysfunction, renal, hepatic, uh, uh, really just about any organ uh, dysfunction uh, can occur. And when people see clustering, it'll make them think that. So when I'm seeing a new patient uh, with suspected amyloidosis, there's a couple of, uh, uh, of things. One is there are basic laboratory uh, screening that uh, we do for pretty much any patient, uh, which will include, of course, standard labs, including standard biomarkers, uh, but also very importantly, ruling out a monoclonal protein, as I think we'll get to uh, in a little bit, uh, to help uh, guide us whether they could have AL amyloidosis or not. We'll review basic imaging, at least with an echocardiogram uh, and an EKG, and uh, we will uh, go from there. Finally, we'll look for uh, 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 typical findings on echo that might uh, point us one way or another and typical findings on demographics that point us one way or the other. So for example, a particularly extremely uh, thick looking echo would push us toward, more towards actually thinking about transthyretin than AL, although that's certainly not an exact uh, uh, science. Uh, and demographics, a, a older male without other uh, signs of organ dysfunction would make me think transthyretin. A, uh, a younger patient, a woman uh, would uh, uh, push me more towards AL amyloidosis. That's great. Thanks a lot, Ron. Um, Dr. Hanna, uh, you've considered the uh, extra cardiac manifestations of disease and actually have conducted a study um, looking at carpal tunnel involvement. Um, can you tell us, uh, with much the same scenario, meeting a patient for the first time, what are the, what are the particular uh, uh, historical features or, uh, more importantly, the physical manifestations that clue you into TTR versus AL disease? 
Yeah, it's a great question. I will first start with AL. So there is uh, one physical exam finding that's essentially pathognomonic for AL, and that's macroglossia, or an enlarged tongue from the deposition. Although there's one mutation with hereditary TTR that's been described to have that, I would say 99% of the time, if you see an echo that looks like cardiac amyloid and you see a big, uh, thick tongue or macroglossia, that's essentially pathognomonic for AL. Um, the, um, you know, other physical exam findings that, which are generally found in heart failure, such as ele elevated jugular venous pressure, edema, that's not going to be specific to either one. Typically, if you have orthostatic hypotension, significant orthostatic hypotension on exam, that it could either be AL or various mutations cause hereditary autonomic neuropathy. Um, but wild type doesn't tend to have that significant of autonomic neuropathy. Um, as far as historical clues, you brought up carpal tunnel syndrome. So bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome is actually pretty common in patients with uh, ATTR, um, particularly wild type ATTR, uh, cardiac amyloidosis. Um, you know, upwards of 40% of patients uh, with this diagnosis will have a preceding uh, history of bilateral carpal tunnel surgery. Now, this can also occur in AL amyloidosis. So the fact that you have a history of bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome doesn't mean you don't have AL, but it's more suspicious for ATTR, and particularly wild type. And oftentimes, the, the carpal tunnel manifestations can precede the cardiac manifestations by 5, 10, and even 15 years. So it's always very important to ask anyone who's presenting with a thickened ventricle or hepath, um, ask them have they had you know, carpal tunnel surgery. Another very important historical clue um, is spinal stenosis. And actually, that's much more commonly seen in ATTR than AL. And in fact, again, almost exclusively in wild type. And finally, uh, biceps tendon rupture. Um, there was a nice publication about, uh, about a third of patients with wild type ATTR cardiac amyloidosis have a history of biceps tendon rupture. So it's these orthopedic or entrapic entrapment neuropathy type of manifestations will really heighten the suspicion that a patient can have, uh, you know, actual cardiac amyloidosis and, and more so ATTR than AL in a lot of those manifestations.